Good morning, everyone. We uh, are here in the Phoenix area, and we have made it to AAA bus sales. I know one thing. I've just been around this corner right here, but if you need a bus part, I think this guy's going to have anything and everything you need. There are buses just stacked in here everywhere. There's a whole sack of transmissions and engines and you name it. He's got it. So we're just here to get an oil change and some checkup. But we stayed to Cracker Barrel last night, about 30 miles away. Pretty good night. Pretty good night. It's about 65 degrees this morning. It's going to be about 95 today again. 90, 90, 95. And we're just going to get some work done. And the airport is very near. Find the plane that's up there somewhere. But you hear the planes flying over all the time. But yeah. Here I got the bus in the shop. Zan is waiting. Hoods open and they're changing the oil and doing some checkovers on it. Check my tires, grease some things, and get us ready to get back on the road. And we got oil changed and got checked over, got tires checked, got the lube on the chassis, got the oil changed, and Tony is a knowledgeable uh, mechanic and instructor on uh, diesel engines and school buses. So if anybody has any issues or any questions or any needs a part, contact Tony at AAA Bus Sales and Service in here in Phoenix, Arizona. He ships out things he's hit every day, so it's just a non-stop. Very knowledgeable group. Um, they know what they're looking for, and I just enjoyed it. It was a nice time. Looking around this yard, Zen had a good time just laying in the shade, but right now we're at Walmart getting some few groceries, and we're heading out to find some lunch, because Mr. Zen down here has been into the uh, sweaty mode from barking so much, or he's, he's been drooling. And eat some cool air. We we'll try to find something to eat, and then we're gonna try to find a place to stay for the night. Whew, we have made it to our lunch space. Tell you what, driving a bus in Phoenix is—it's a—it's <laughs> tiring. Traffic, 60, 70 miles an hour. People going in and out of everywhere. Roads, road construction—you name it. Oh, get me out back out to the country. But right now, we're going to stop over here at this place. You can see it, but uh, what's the thing called? A friend of mine named Max from Canada recommends this uh, place here, a burger place called In and Out. So we're going to go get a burger and just see how good it is. We've got a security guy next to us, so we'll be able to watch the bus while we get our food. And the line of cars wraps around the building for the drive through so we're gonna i'm gonna walk in and leave the dog out here because he can't go in the building back in a minute with some lunch sorry about the wind noise but here's our in and out burger one for me one for zen got a drink he's ready to chomp his down he'll leave his in one bite so here he is to you max let's see how this goes oh that was a pretty good meal that was the in and out burger is pretty good stuff I think it's the double cheese and the uh, sauce that really makes it, but it was really good. Zen liked it. He ate his about one bite, but how it goes. A couple things I noticed about this Phoenix area is one, a lot of people here. So, yeah, there are. And number two is you can't make a left turn out of any place onto the road unless you go to a stoplight. And number three, they don't like nomads. There's hardly any place that you can find that lets you stay overnight in the Phoenix area. All the Walmarts are shut down, all the Lowe's, the Targets. The only place I found is uh, the good old Cracker Barrel. And uh, that's it. Oh, and the Harvest Host. There's like three in the entire area of Phoenix, which is like, what, what 50 million people? I don't know. But there's... Uh, it's not too nomad friendly or not too RV friendly unless you want to go to an RV park. That's my own opinion. So right now we're going to try to head to a uh, national 
park or somewhere national forest and get out of the city i think we might have found our place for the night this will work this is blm land and uh get you to where it's at in just a minute but there's a lot of cacti everywhere got this humongous sore of cactus here and the dog just pulled himself out of my hand but lots of flowers so we're going to walk around highway is over there probably about a mile I hear a little noise but not too bad but i think we can stay here for the night we're going to see if we can find a little bit more level spot because that's got a little bit lean to it this is not a real level area but we're going to keep looking yeah, this is BLM land. This is a Black Canyon Trailhead founded by looking at iOverlander on my app. This is in the, I think, the little town of Black Canyon, but you can tell that it is a BLM land, Bureau of Land Management. And we'll take a walk up this trail. I think this is it here behind us. See where it goes. But there's just a lot of cacti everywhere beautiful beautiful we're gonna go over here to the map see what we can find here uh black canyon trailhead so yeah we're right here it goes a long way this is an eighth of a mile 2000 feet elevation so there's not much elevation change 2059 to 2078 my kind of hike over here looks kind of a I've driven roads looks like that. Now that, <laughs> yeah. Salt Canyon over in the Tonto Forest looks kind of like that as you drive it. So we'll see what happens. Let's go for a walk. All right, we'll go if we can find some rattlesnakes. Still got flowers in bloom here. The cactus look nice. Ooh, look at that. According to my Google view, that is a prickly pear, purple prickly pear, but I don't see any purple on it. It's those. Got lots of flowers. No bees. There's got lots of pollen inside like they've been here. Let's go walking. Dog needs to get out and stretch his legs. We've kind of been stuck in the vehicle and driving around this is north of phoenix on highway or interstate 17. i'm not for sure how far we are from phoenix probably i don't know 30 40 miles i don't know but there's a shot of the valley high desert giant swarrows and ancient swarrows creosote bushes i know those and a lot of uh, different cacti than you find in the sonoran desert No OHVs, only walking, horseback, and bicycles. Let's see. Eh. Do we need to sign in? Nah, we're not going that far. I got my trusty guard dog in case a coyote comes out. Oh, there's an interesting cactus. Is that a Joshua tree? I don't know. I need to learn more about my cacti. Let me uh, Google it. Hold on. All right. According to Google, that's a buckhorn. So the uh, looks kind of like a resembles a deer antlers. I have never seen one. Kind of cool. Let's go, buddy. Come on. We're gonna walk some more. All those cacti. This is totally different from where I was a few days ago. Totally different. Beautiful. 
Look at all those cacti on the hill. It's got some small trees, some Palo Verde bushes or trees, different kind of bushes, little different flowers. Boy, they mean business when they say no certain vehicles or people through here. Look, look at this big metal gate with a ramp on the side hmm, let's see if we can get the dog through there i think he can fit under i sure know he won't walk across that ramp well how about that <laughs> it's got a latch and it opens up just follow the instructions but it will keep people from zipping through here all right back to some more walking More prickly pears. These are all in bloom. These are pretty. Another big swallow cacti. Oh, these are, I know what this one is. Teddy bear cactus. They call these teddy bears because they resemble a little stuffed teddy bear. But you sure wouldn't want to hug that one. You'd be full of holes. Yeah, teddy bear cactus. Yeah, a lot of cacti up here. Close motor vehicles. You're making our way up towards uh, Utah, so we're going to stop here maybe for the night, maybe two, depending on how we go tomorrow. Head towards uh, Sedona. Stay there for a couple, three days probably, and work our way towards the Grand Canyon and go up toward the Utah eventually. Got to be there by the middle of next month. So I got about two and a half weeks to get there. I think I can make it. Look at all these cacti. This is just full of them. Trails nice, well marked, well used. Dog likes it. Zen likes walking the trail. these things a variety of cactus swaro and there's a teddy bear cactus there's more up there prickly pears looks like i don't know five or six different kinds of cacti here in this immediate area look at that one that one's the granddaddy of all of them he's huge how many armors one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, maybe eleven, could be twelve. These are typical looking cactus you see in the portraits and pictures and movies. And that one's a big one. They say the swirl cactus grows uh, four feet in 20 years, I think. About a foot a year on the average, not very much. I think that one's probably 
couple hundred years old. Probably all these are in their hundreds. Oh, the rocks. Oh, this is nice. Nice cloudy day, not too sunny. Keep on going. There you go. Look how these rocks are standing straight up and down. That's a good place for a snake or two, or a whole herd of snakes. There's just something about being out in nature that's just so relaxing. It's kind of a good therapy. You know, coming from the city like I did a little while ago, and you know, eight lanes of traffic and bumper to bumper and 70 miles an hour. And you get up here just, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles away, and it's like, ah, so nice. And I know it's not for everybody, but it's, it's good therapy for me. And the dog likes to too because he can get out. He's not much for a lot of people and a lot of traffic. There's another teddy bear cactus. Just stop for a second. We'll zoom in on it and see if you get a little closer. You see why they're called teddy bears? They look like little stuffed bears. It's a nice canyon walk. If you're in the Black Canyon area, I'd recommend stopping in here in Black Canyon, Arizona. And uh, just Google it under Black Canyon BLM Trailhead and it'll lead you right to the parking lot. Nice, nice walk back. And according to the map, it goes back a long way, so you can probably go back about three miles or four. A day like today would be great because it's just overcast, hardly any sun out, nice clouds, breeze is blowing. Beautiful. Stop there while the pup takes a break. Another cactus, I think it was called Octillo, O-C-T-O-L-L-I-O, -O -L -L -I, I believe. Long, thin cactus. Another variety out here in the desert. Across from that is a, some more of the prickly pears. And there's a little bitty teddy bear all over. Here's a zoom in on this little guy here. There's a little hard to see, but right there's a little lizard on top of the rock. Let's even give him a move. Oh, there he goes. Those things are fast. Man, they're fast. Guess you gotta be fast out here in the desert. You get wind up getting eaten for dinner.
How about this for a view? Valley, cacti. Zoom in a little bit. Nice hills. There's a canyon down there. Maybe that's Black Canyon. I don't know. Cacti everywhere. The view. Interstate 17 is right there. Looks like about a mile away. Can't hear any noise. Traffic hard at all. Wind's blowing the opposite direction from where we're at. Hills, valleys, mountains, cactus, and the pupple. We turned around. He's already worn out. <laughs> we didn't go very far. And the sun came out. Sure can tell it when the sun comes out. It heats up quickly. There's a view of the canyon with some sun behind us and some clouds in front. I think we found our camp spite is right here. There's a fire ring over there. And this is a little turnaround and a level spot. So we're going to pull up in here and and see because everything down here it's got a slope downhill now access to this like i said is off of highway interstate 17 only about a quarter mile and it's easy access just dirt road got a few washboards in it but it's really access, easy to get here i got my bus in here no problem you can get campers in here rvs and everything else but but this is what you and don't worry about the road noise from the highway because can't hear anything. I'll be able to see some tonight, probably in the darkness of the headlights, but other than that, it's pretty quiet. We're going to move our bus and see if we can get set up on the hill here. We did get to our other spot. Here's the sunset for the night. It's uh, maybe pretty nice. A different view from what I used to see down in the flat part of the desert in Quartzsite. It's got a rolling hill, got some sorrel cactus, and we did move the bus up on the hill to the little spot I pointed out, and there it is. Pretty level, got a little bit of a lean, but not too bad. And there's the dog guarding the bus, guarding the campsite. But there's the sunset, and if it gets any better, I'll uh, get some more videos, but it looks pretty good right now. And here's the view from the campsite. The camera doesn't show any movement in the dark, but this is just a still picture I took. Full moon, you can see some lights from the highway and there's a building or two not too far away. There is a van parked down below me that's been there all afternoon. Uh, a young couple came in and walked the trail and they went back to the van and they're staying there the night. So, Got some neighbors, which is good, but it's really peaceful out here. I wish my camera would pick up the uh, the full moon and the stars and the clear sky. Beautiful and cool. It's going to be like in the upper 50s. or That's pretty nice. So we got some windows open in the bus and enjoy the cool weather. Good morning, everyone. Stay here at the trailhead last night. A really quiet night. Nothing going on. No vehicles came in. Woke up this morning. And this is something you don't see a lot of times. Is I woke up and looked at my front window. And there are a couple Bible course people giving out literature. And they're sitting there with ties and things on. So this is something that... Uh, don't run into a lot of times on uh, trailheads, <laughs> but each to, to each their own, and uh, good luck to them this morning. But uh, this is a decent sized, decent trailhead that uh, I think has a lot of people come today because it's an easy trail to walk on. We're taking the pup out for his morning stroll, he's ready to go, and 
check back with you later. I was doing some Googling last night and I uh, misquoted on the uh, Saguaro cactus. I did some uh, research and I quoted, I said that they grow about a foot a year. Well, no, they grow about a foot every four years or five years. And when they have little arms like this one here, it's got little bumps on the side. They get arms about 60 to 75 years old. So that cactus there is probably, you know, 80 years old or so. And they get extra arms so they can uh, maintain more water in their system. They're the botanist one I read have no idea how to really judge the age of a swaro cactus or a cactus because they don't have tree rings or life rings like trees do. So there's just a pretty good guess of how, how old they are. They can live an average of up to 200 plus years old. And another thing is a full grown uh, swaro which these are not full grown yet, but some of those are up on the hill. They're getting better. They're getting more arms, but the full grown swaro cactus can weigh up to six tons, which is 12,000 pounds. So if you take this cactus and that cactus together, guess what? They weigh as much as the bus. Yeah, yeah, they uh, they will weigh probably more than the bus, and just two cacti because they're they're so dense and and thick. But uh, that's a little just quickie on the uh, swaro cactus education that I learned also. And another thing that I want to quickly throw out there, a little pet peeve of mine, a little mini rant is as I'm walking around this uh, nice little camp area, not a really camp, but this trailhead, is I want to applaud everybody who is a, a pet owner that pick up after their pet. That's, you know, that's the right thing to do. But people, this is my pet peeve. You know, your animal packs it in, you need to pack it out. So thanks for picking it up, but Take the bags with you. There are about six or eight little poop bags all over this parking area because there's no trash can. And so now you have these black and blue and green and red poop bags identifying their spaces in the uh, parking area. So yeah, if, you, if they pack it in, people, you know, pack it out. Put it in your vehicle. Take it to home or someplace and dispose of it. Don't leave it laying behind. I noticed that in quartzite too on the desert, people would pick up their uh, dog remnants and just leave it on the side of the road. So, you know, yeah, I know, but just please take it out and dispose of it properly. Thank you. We're going to end the video right here. We're going to, Zen and I are going to enjoy this day. It's a nice, cool day. We may go back on the trail and walk around some more, but. He's enjoying his little rest after his breakfast. And I'm going to try to change maybe my tail lights, yellow ones that uh, were burned out on one side. I may do that today, once I get it out of the tree, that is. So, thanks for joining along, everybody. We'll uh, catch you on down the road as we get moving on to our next destination soon.